out of the clear blue sky, I get a phone call from a physicist I had never heard of in my life named Brian Green. He had, he had someone point out these, uh, th these uh, Fermat surface depictions, and he wanted to know if there was a way that those could be used as figures illustrating Calabi-Yau spaces in a book he was writing on string theory called The Elegant Universe. And this actually became a, a, a top-selling uh, popular science book uh, between about 1999 and, and 2002. And he has become quite a, a celebrity. Um, and anyway, his, his suggestion, that it turned out there was one thing I hadn't done. And so he suggested the, he suggested, uh, the thing I would need to do to actually, uh, actually do what he needed. And it all worked. And this all became part of what is now a, a, a rather large uh, body of, um, of uh, visualizations and images on, on calabi yau spaces. So just for, for a, a quick overview, what is a calabi yau space? What was Brian Greene interested in? What are the stri string theorists interested in? Well, uh, a calabi yau space is a particular n-complex -com dimensional manifold which has a very interesting property that it, ha that it has a vanishing Ricci tensor. Vanishing Ricci tensor, uh, for mathematicians, is just a vanishing Ricci tensor. For physicists, a vanishing Ricci tensor is a vacuum Einstein equation. So what was interesting uh, was the link between the existence of, th of these equations and uh, the solutions in particular circumstances to vacuum Einstein equations. It turns out that the fifth power, the quintic complex Fermat surface, P equals 5, will provide the 10-dimensional string theory with the six-dimensional Einstein manifold needed for the missing dimensions of space-time. That is where the interest comes from. And so uh, although there are more advanced versions of string theory that work in 11 dimensions, uh, referring to the, uh, to the basic string theory with 10-dimensional space-time, since we only see four dimensions, three dimensions in space and one in time, there have to be 10 minus 4 or 6 remaining dimensions, and the calabi yau quintic polynomial works as one of a number of alternatives. In fact, a very, very large number of alternatives. This is simply the simplest and the most photogenic, I would say. Um, the, the mathematical part of the interest in calabi yau spaces actually has to do with the fact that this started, started with Calabi's conjecture and uh, Yao's proof that calabi yau spaces with ricci flat metrics exist, but so far, no one has ever written one down. They exist. There is no example. It's a major unsolved problem in mathematics to make the make the connection between Yao's proof, for which he's now chairman of the math department at Harvard, and the question of, can we write one down? Physicists, I guess, are the ones who want, want to write it down. Mathematicians are happy to have an existence proof. But me, as a visualizer, um, I would like to, to, to see these things. So if, I, if you can't, can't write it down, maybe making a picture would help. And so that's part of this whole process, is let's make a picture. So here is, here is the picture. This is, this is basically um, what you have here in hard copy. Uh, this is a, a much later version, which actually uh, allows color instead of just plastic. <coughs> and this is the, the calabi yau quintic And I'll show you in the live demo in a couple of minutes uh, the amazing things that you can um, learn simply from the way I chose to draw this as opposed to some other ways that you might choose to draw this shape. Of course, there are six hidden dimensions in the calabi yau space. This is a two-dimensional surface. This is a cross-section. This is a slice through the six-dimensional surface, since that's what I can draw. <laughs> in Green's book, after we, after we got in touch and I started sending him things, his artist uh, essentially took, took what, what I sent and turned the simple example of a calabi yau space into this picture in the book. And then the idea was, um, if I have an object that is 
three-dimensional and it has a fourth dimension, I can imagine the fourth dimension as occurring in snapshots. So time one, time two, time three, times four, times five. So that turns a three-dimensional object into a four-dimensional object. So this is basically adding two dimensions to the, to the two-dimensional object. He actually should, should, he needs two more. <laughs> this isn't quite enough. But the reason why in this picture and in, in the pieces of film I'll show you, these are laid out as copies, is trying to give the idea that these are copies that extend the two-dimensional surface to a full six-dimensional manifold. This is really a, a representation of a four-dimensional manifold. There need to be two more, two more dimensions. And then he wrote another book a couple years later, uh, the, the Fabric of the Cosmos. And in that book, <laughs> they took uh, what you can, you can see is this color image. <laughs> and then, then somebody went in with Photoshop and put complete nonsense spider webs on it. Absolutely <laughs> meaningless. It's like, OK, I know you want to see something here, but what is it? There are lines in the Kalabi yes space images that I create that do mean something, but not these. Among the, the ways you can, you can deal with this in a way that uh, have meaningful lines, this amazing sculpture of, of, of Bathsheba, and I know at least one person in the audience tells me that he actually went online and bought one of these for himself. Uh, this is, uh, uh, believe me, she's, a, she's an amazing artist. She has many things besides this. She has galaxies and all kinds of things all all uh, put into glass spheres. But she did this uh, for me. I gave the first copy of this in person to Brian Green when I got the first copy hot off the presses. But this is, in my opinion, this is one of the most beautiful shapes or, or representations, actually, of this shape I have ever seen. Come take a look at it. Now, what happened next after, is since, since Green became uh, sort of a spokesperson for uh, popularizing spring, uh, string theory, he then uh, was chosen to be the narrator of a three-part NOVA series on string theory. And uh, the NOVA team contacted me, and I sent code to their professional animation team in London, and they made a 3D Studio Max plug-in. And from their 3D Studio Max plug-in, they generated a whole set of images that were used in the background of the NOVA series and actually appeared that same month on the cover of Scientific American. So you can see I've, I've uh, had quite a series of magazine covers over the years. So here's, here's a typical picture uh, that, the, uh, that the, uh, the art design team for NOVA uh, made from my original equations. And then they did this version of that uh, attempting to show the, uh, the, the multiple, multi multiple dimension. And with some, with some luck here, I will be able to show you some of these. Extra dimensions. We Let me literally mean extra dimensions of space that are these tiny extra dimensions curled up into such peculiar shapes have any effect on our everyday world if string theory is right we would have to admit that there are really more dimensions out there and i find that completely mind-blowing 